Nobody knows the answer on Amari Daniels, but can you clarify where we stand on his recruitment? Amari Daniels at Miami Central. He was at Miami Central. He went to Jackson for a year because his dad was coaching there. He went back to Central. Uh, so he's there now. He's a three-star running back. Um and, you know, he's somebody that Miami has been in communications with. Uh, it seemed like Miami and Texas A&M would be uh, the finalists for his uh, commitment. He said that he wants to commit before his senior year, which begins, I believe, on Friday when uh, Central finally kicks off the season. But he announced today via his Twitter account that Mari Daniels, that is, that his top two are Texas A&M and Georgia. So... For whatever reason, whether it's by our design or not, it seems that Miami has fallen off of that picture. Um, so we do have Thad Franklin from Hollywood Shamanad Banana as the running back in this class, six foot, two hundred and thirty pound uh, bruiser who also plays basketball and will play basketball in, in college as well. Um, but yeah, I think that that is going to open up uh, just Miami to pursue some other options. I think that might be the offensive scholarship slot for Malik Curtis. Uh, the athlete from Bishop Vero High School, who uh, Fort Myers, uh, who I said needs to play offense, and he's playing exclusively offense in high school, and looks like he's going to play high school or uh, offense in college because he needs to be a space player in offense. He just does. Um, but you know, if you're thinking about okay, well, where's the scholarship going to come for him to stay on offense if we already have Jacoby, uh, Jacoby George, uh, Romello Brinson, and Rashard Smith committed at wide receiver. We need to pick up an offensive uh, scholarship slot or figure that a whole thing out. Daniel's going elsewhere. Again, whether it's by our design or not, I think that picks up that offensive scholarship slot. Um, is it Dom. Wow. Steroided up Dom Brown. What's going on, kid? I had to text you, man. I was thinking about you the other day, man. Uh, chilling, chilling. So uh, the, the old... The oldest man in the world, the one who Methuselah called grandfather, is known uh, Dom Brown. Um, but yeah, you know, so uh, Amari Daniel seems to be going elsewhere. Um, and is it a loss? Is it someone who could have come here and played? Things like that, yes. Um, but I don't think it's a crippling loss. I don't think it's a debilitating thing. Um, you know, and he just follows... Uh, you know, the last notable Miami Central running back uh, to go to the SEC was James Cook, uh, who went to Georgia and has been woefully misused uh, there. He was woefully misused at Miami Central um, as well. And I said it for years. They wanted to run him at like receiver and they just, it was stupid. Just like, give the kid the ball, let him run. Like, you know, and on his own merits, not even the fact that he's Dalvin Cook's younger brother. And da, 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 like, I just thought that they misused him so badly at Central and Georgia has been using him in the exact same way. So if you look at all those swing passes, those little, uh, you know, routes that go perpendicular to the sideline, just those flare routes and like all those kind of things that they do. They were doing that at, in, in high school with him. And it's been carried up to the college level, which I just think is ridiculously stupid. Uh, that being said, um, Amari Daniels could be signing up to go do that in Georgia, or he could be following Jimbo Fisher, who was, uh, you know, at Florida State when he was a freshman and one of the first coaches to contact him and things like that. And now was at Texas A&M and could go out that way, uh, to blaze his own path. But, you know, either way, I think that we'll be okay, uh, with whatever decision he makes. Is five and one good? Yes. Is five and one better than we were last year? Yes. Is five and one about the best that we were going to be at this time, absent the performance of a lifetime against Clemson? Yes. So, I mean, there are things to like. Like Mark said, you know, holding Pittsburgh to 22 yards rushing, elite. Holding them to four field goals inside of the red zone. You know, so they're, you know, we're scoring sevens and they're scoring threes. You know, things like that. I love it. There's a lot to like. Bubba Bolden being the best safety in America. You got – two of the best defensive ends around. you got some very good defensive tackles, including a freshman and uh, Jared Harrison Hunt, um, who is really just making, I mean, just exponential growth right now. You know, you've got athletic linebackers. You know, they're not the ones who are starting, but whatever. Uh, 
you know, you got three cornerbacks who are playing really well. Uh, DJ Ivy really stepping up. Al Blades is being his consistent self. To Corey Couch being tasked with man-to-man coverage, doing it really well. Kicking game is great. Punning game has been as good as it was last year, if not better. And that was just night and day different than, you know, years before. Uh, you know, Derek King uh, still is just an electric playmaker at any time that uh, he's on the field. Sure, has it been 100% video game numbers for him all year long? No, but he still can go out there and make plays. You still got three really good running backs. You still got, you know, the best tight end in America. You got one of the better backup tight ends in America. You got some wide receivers who, from time to time, luck their way into some decent uh, kinds of, uh, you know, performances. Offensive line hasn't been great, but, you know, they're doing some great things here and there, you know, and things like that. There's a lot to like. The fact this team did not quit, this team has persevered, has found ways to win, to win your clunkers. You know what I mean? That's how you get to a double-digit win total. Every game is not going to be a six-touchdown blowout like it was against Florida State. And a Florida State team who that was rock bottom, and you can see it because they're going back and they're beating these other teams. They're on a path towards decent. They just beat number five uh, North Carolina this last week. I don't think North Carolina was a number five ranked team, but they had that by their name when they went to Florida State. You know what I mean? But we were the team that beat them into the dirt and set them on a course to be better because they said, we can't do this anymore. So the impetus was our beatdown of them, just like Clemson reset Miami's program with 58 nothing in 2015. We said, no, we cannot abide by this. We have to go in a different direction. So to your point, there are things that are going well, but just be, all that glitters is not gold. So just because we're five and one, just because we have won some of these games does not mean that everything is part four and one. Excuse me, Lord Jesus, I'm already going down the line. Five games, four and one, whatever. You get my point. Everything's not perfect, and there are still some things that we can do better. And that's what we're talking about because the goal is perfection. And if you, you know, you shoot for that, then hopefully things are going to be well. But yeah, there are some things that are, even with being four and one, could be better.